What's up guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're gonna talk about how to find sponsors in racing. In this video, I'm gonna give you guys a few tips on how to find sponsors, specifically in the karting industry. I never really took the time or energy to go and find sponsors to transfer into racing cars because of the opportunities I was given in karting, so this video is gonna be kinda of tailored towards the karting industry mainly. But I'm sure a lot of this advice can be used to transfer into racing cars as well. Finding a sponsor is finding a sponsor. Early in my career, my parents and I worked really hard at trying to find different ways to attract sponsors. Over the years, I've had sponsors in the United States, Canada, Australia, and Europe. And now my entire income comes from the karting industry. So I feel I'm very well educated on this topic and hopefully I can bring some of that information to you guys. In my beginning years of karting, I always looked for videos that were tailored specifically to the karting industry when finding sponsors and I could never find them. So hopefully this video is gonna fill that gap. So with that being said, let's get started with the video. So one of the easiest ways to get sponsored is to win races. I know that's easier said than done, but people like being associated with winners. It's that simple. So whatever series you're competing in, even if it's a local, regional, or national series, focus on getting your card at the front of the pack and people will pay attention to that. I always tried to imagine that my career was on the line at a lot of these races because in the reality it was. If I didn't win a race, that meant I probably wouldn't get sponsored by somebody, which meant my career was gonna be that much shorter. So drive like your career depends on it because in the reality it does. You don't need to win races to find sponsors, but it sure does help. Competing at the front of the pack is a good way to get your foot in the door with a lot of these sponsors. A lot of the time, sponsorship comes down to introductions and whether the person knows you or not. By winning races, it's an easier way for them to recognize who you are and already know that their brand is going to be associated with winning. I had a lot of emails that I sent out to potential sponsors that never got a response until after I won a race. And then it seemed like everybody got the email all at the same time and they responded. Winning helps a lot. So drive like your career depends on it and focus on trying to win the race that you're at. Regardless of the series you're in, focus on winning. Now, winning is not the only way to get a sponsor, and there's other ways that I'm gonna address. I know where a lot of you guys are where you need a sponsor to help you win. You know, you're at a point where you're kind of plateaued and you need somebody else's help to try and propel you further in your career. You're out of financial support, so you need a sponsor to do that for you. I've been there, so I know how you guys are feeling. So although winning races is the easiest way to find a sponsor, it's not the only way to find a sponsor. That leads me into my second tip for finding sponsors, which is contacting people. It's super, super helpful to go around the racetrack and introduce yourself to as many people as possible. Not only will this help you meet more people in the karting industry, it's gonna get that introduction out of the way so that you already know the people that you're talking to. Like I said, winning helps people recognize who you are, but if you don't win, you need to introduce yourself to people so they recognize who you are already. And the more people you meet, the more possibilities for sponsorship. This is something I really regretted not doing early in my career because not only was I asking somebody for money or asking for somebody for a sponsorship, it's somebody that I'd walk by a thousand times and never even acknowledged. So it's really embarrassing if you just ask somebody for a sponsorship without knowing them already. It's possible, but it just makes the process a little more awkward. So by introducing yourself to a bunch of people, you kind of skip that first step of the introduction and you already know who you're talking to. Now there's times where you can't physically meet the person you're asking a sponsorship from and you have to write an email. This is a place that I made a big mistake early in my career. I'd write these really long emails telling about how many races I won, who I was, what I'm racing, how I'm doing, and I'd focus very little on what I was asking and what I was gonna bring to them. After meeting a lot of people that own the companies that sponsor me, they're super, super busy. They don't have time to read these long emails about your accomplishments and who you are. Try and keep an email to a sponsor very short and concise. Start it off by introducing yourself and giving a little bit of background on who you are. Then talk about what you're gonna provide for that sponsor. Then follow it up with what exactly you're asking from the sponsor. Then thank them for their time. Be simple and concise. Let them know exactly what your plans are. You've gotta make it a very simple yes or no answer to the person. Because a lot of the time, they'll look at the email length and they just won't even read the email. You really don't wanna waste the time of the person you're asking for a sponsorship, so keep the email short and concise. But make sure you try and contact as many people as possible. That way you have the most opportunities for a sponsorship. This brings me to my third point of what do you ask for in a sponsorship and what do you bring to a sponsor? This is a very hard topic to cover because everybody has different strengths. The key is you have to bring value. That's what it's all about. Figure out what you do that has value, whether that's your on-track results, your knowledge of racing, your ability to coach a driver, your ability to show up on time and just help out with physical labor, like setting up a race tent. There's a lot of stuff that you can do that brings value. 
sweeping a shop floor has value to it. If nobody else wants to do it, there's value in that. So figure out what you can do that brings value to a sponsor and then offer that. Like I said, winning is one of the best values you can bring to a team. But for me, I always try and bring my knowledge of racing and my ability to coach drivers to a sponsor so that they know that I'm bringing a little bit more than just my on-track speed to the team. I'm going to be helping out with the team. I'm going to be helping develop a go-kart or help develop with the engine side of things. You want to pinpoint what you're going to bring to the team so that they know that you're bringing them value as well as them giving you something. So now that you've figured out what your value is, you have to ask in return for something. This is where you really need to be realistic. You can't be offering to sweep somebody's shop floor and then expecting a full ride sponsorship in return. You have to be able to ask for something of comparable value. Sometimes this ends up in a partial sponsorship or a deal on a chassis or whatever it may be. Try and find something of similar value so that both parties feel like they're getting a good deal. But focus on value. That's what you want and that's what they want. Find out what your value is and what it's worth to them. This will make it way easier for sponsors to want to sponsor you. My fourth tip is take initiative when it comes to these sponsors. All of the people you're going to ask for a sponsorship are probably very, very busy and they don't have time to create a special sponsorship package for you. They really don't want to do the math and deciding what's valuable for them. They just want to be able to say yes and agree to a plan that has already been created. So take initiative and be creative in how you go about asking for a sponsorship. Another way to take initiative is let's say a team offers you a sponsorship, but they don't really have a way to promote it. Make your own stickers, make your own shirts, do whatever you can to add some value to it. Even if you make some cheap stickers that go on the side of the cart, whoever sponsors you is probably really going to appreciate it. If you've got a suit, put their logo on it. I'm sure they'll appreciate the gesture that you make to help them out. Even before you get a sponsorship, make some stickers up, make something up so that they get a better idea of what the promotion is going to look like. Again, the whole point is to make it easy on the sponsor to say yes. So if it takes less energy from them and they feel that like you're taking initiative and leading this program, then it's an easy yes on their part. And once you get a sponsorship, again, take initiative, post on Instagram without being asked, post on whatever, try and create some extra value for that sponsor just so they know you're taking it to that next step without being asked. So like I said, you want to make it an easy yes for the sponsor. So take initiative, be creative, and allow the sponsor to believe that they're getting a better deal than what they are originally promised. This will definitely help you in the future when you go back to that same sponsor and ask for a hand again. They're going to be way more willing to because they know you're going to be giving them more value than what they originally were guaranteed. And my final tip for finding sponsors is to look for new opportunities. There's always opportunities where teams or businesses are looking to make a deal. For example, if a new series is being launched, sometimes teams will give you a discount on their tent fee just so that they can fill up their tent and that you get a good deal on a race weekend. If there's a new chassis that's being launched to the market, you can probably get a good deal on it just to help the person sell some frames. It's not always going to be free when you first start asking for sponsorships. But like I said, it's that relationship that you're wanting to make so that you can get a good deal in the long run. You also have to be willing to take opportunities when they're presented to you. You really don't want to burn any bridges. Carding politics is obviously very complicated, and so there's always relationships that you don't want to burn a bridge for. But be willing to take that risk and take a calculated risk for a new opportunity. For example, in my early career, I was offered an engine and a chassis to go race the Rotac Grand Nationals. It wasn't with my current team, and I knew I'd upset them if I raced with this other group to go race the Nationals. Me and my dad decided that it would be best that I go anyways just for my career, and looking back, it's probably the best thing I did for my career. It was a calculated risk that I took. I did offend some people, but in the end, it worked out better for me, and I don't look back on that with regret. So whenever you are given an opportunity, make sure you calculate the risk that comes along with that opportunity. So be willing to take an opportunity even though there's risk involved. Understand that there's politics in racing and that's just the way it is, but take some time to assess the risk and understand if it's beneficial for your career to do this or not. You really don't want to burn many bridges in racing because like I said, it's super important the relationships that you create. So look for opportunities and be willing to take them. Just understand that there's always going to be risk involved. So that's it. Focus on getting good results at the races so that you can contact as many people and ask for sponsorships. By creating these relationships, you can see what value you have and what you can get for the value that you're bringing these sponsors. Just remember to take initiative and be creative and find different ways to bring value to your sponsor. Just so that if an opportunity ever presents itself, you're there and ready to take full advantage of it. Just remember these things and hopefully you can find yourself getting more sponsors throughout your career. If you guys have any more questions about finding sponsors, make sure to leave those questions in the comments below. I'll definitely be answering them and trying to help you guys out as much as possible. Finding sponsors is always a difficult task because the sponsors are always wanting something different. 
but there's always a way to make a deal happen. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Make sure to follow me on my Instagram and on my Facebook. That's where you get any updates on my racing career. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you at the next one.